today we're going to set the CAN node ID for a CAN open network using the Excelnet AP2 A2 axis CAN module. Uh, basically what we're going to do is set the first CAN node ID to 1 and the second one will automatically become 2. So in a CAN open network, a multi-axis drive, the first node is node 1. Um, that will be axis A. The second node will be uh, axis B will be node 2. And if you had a 3 or 4 axis CAN module, again, axis A is node 1, axis B is node 2, axis C is node 3, and axis 4 is node C. If you have another drive, well then that would start with you know the next logical number for the next drive. So taking a look at the setup we have here today, I've got the uh, USB to CAN adapter, which has a terminating resistor. Um, this USB to CAN adapter has no data rate limit, which helps us. I have the NK network kit, you know, whatever model AP2, NK, or whatever model drive you have, NK. That comes with a 9-pin to RJ45 adapter a little 10-inch piece of RJ45 Cat5 UTP cable. And there's a terminator on this board, but the network kit comes with its own terminator. I'm going to use that later. I also have the SER-CK to connect to the drive over the serial port first. I'm using a B&B &B Electronics USB to serial adapter. This is the AP2 2-axis Excelnet module. I've got the 24-volt um, power supply connected, and I have two motors up and running connected to the drive. These were configured using CME2. So, as you can see, I have the data sheet on page 22 of 32, configuring the CAN node ID. There's a couple of switches that are connected to a uh, parallel to serial shift register. Uh, but you'll notice switch 18 is jumpered in, switching to ground, which uh, causes the MOSI or MISO to stop working. Uh, if we take a look at CME2, we can see that we're configured as node 127, and on the node configuration, the switch value is 255. So I have to toggle the switch to get rid of the, the pull down. And I can turn the, the first switch to node 1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to get this node ID to apply, I have to save and reset the drive. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm connected over the serial port. But um, I, I'm setting up the CAN network so I can then connect the CAN network. So you'll notice axis A is node 1 in pre-operational state. Axis B is node 2 in pre-operational state. Uh, if we take a look at the control panel, we can see that we're in a CAN mode. It's pre-operational, so I can't enable the drive. I can go to a jog mode and jog the motor just fine, but be careful you don't save that to flash. That's a different mode of operation. That's not a CAN open mode there, so disable and then enable. I'm in a CAN mode, and you'll see the same thing for axis A. It's in a CAN mode, so we're, we're good for a CAN open network to come in and take command. Okay, now that we feel like we're all set up with a serial port, we can change the, the communication over the CAN network. And at the moment, there's no CAN devices. Well, I have to plug in my CAN device. So I'm going to unplug my serial USB adapter and plug in my USB to CAN adapter. Okay, that's right. I'm no longer connected over the serial port. So I'm going to connect over the CAN network. So CAN network. And I found a CAN interface. I've got a Copley CAN interface. It's a single act, single channel interface. And one megabit's the default. That's what the CME2 is set up for. And that's the one I'm going to select. It'll go out on the network and look for the nodes. It sees a CAN 
node address 1 as axes B and a CAN node, node address 2 as axes 2. And as we can see, we have a blinking green light for pre-operational state. There's no red indicator for CAN limit reached. Just because it works doesn't mean it's a good idea to violate the CAN rules. We're supposed to have a CAN terminator at both ends of the network. So I'm going to unplug the USB connection here and measure across CAN high and CAN low. And I'm only measuring 120 ohms. That's because I've only got a CAN terminator at the beginning of the CAN network. I need one at the other end. So at the other end on the development board, we have a jumper that we can move from off to on position that installs a 120 ohm terminator at this end of th that end of the network. And now if we take a resistance measurement, we see 60 ohms, which is the value you're supposed to see when you have 220 ohms in parallel with each other. Okay, uh, now, because I like to see lights blink, before I turn the power on, I'm going to disconnect the master from the slave, and we're going to watch the lights. So when we turn the power on, the CAN node is looking for another CAN device on the network, and it doesn't see it. It sends out a message, and it gets no response. Uh, even if the master is not communicating with it, it doesn't see the interface chip. So we get a red blinking light. So, yeah, it's in a pre-operational state, but the red indicator indicates that it couldn't find a master or another CAN device on the network. So, we're going to plug it in, and we're going to satisfy its request for a master by connecting CME2, and we'll see the, see the light go out. So, I'm no longer connected over the serial port. I'm going to use the CAN interface to try to connect to the drive. So tools, communication wizard, CAN interface, and it locates node 1, axes A, and node 2, axes B. And we can also see that the indicator light is flashing for pre-operational state. So everything looks good here. So for extra fun, we're going to connect a third node to the network. So I have my really long 100 foot cable here connected to my node 3 with a terminator. And on the node address switch on the side of the drive, I have to change the dial to node 3. So now we have a third node ID on the network. Um, I should also remove the terminator from the second node so that I have a terminator at the beginning of the network. It's a pass-through with a stub length very short to the drive and then, you know, 100 feet of cable off to the last node with a terminator at the end of the network. So again, if I was to measure the resistance, I would measure 60 ohms. So CME2 doesn't see it yet, so we have to reconnect over the CAN network. Yes, I've got the Copley 1 megabit. Hopefully that's the default of the drive I have over there. So what it's doing now is it's scanning the network and it finds node 1, of course node 2 is part of that, and node 3. So we can connect to this drive, look at axes 1 and axes 2, A and B is node 1 and 2, and then I can disconnect from the multi-axis drive and connect to the single axis drive as node 3. While we're here, we're just going to double check. Yes, it's using the switches, it's a CAN device, and it's one megabit. Um, if that wasn't correct, we wouldn't be able to find it, and we would have to connect over CME2 to, to correct whatever issues may exist. Because I have a little extra time, I'm going to show you something that I think is really cool. Uh, can view, can be connected to the network because we have a Copley can open interface device. So while I'm talking to node 3 over CME2, I can also monitor with can view the traffic. Um, this can create a can log that we can record, stop recording, and send a can log to the firmware engineers. Uh, we can also look at the, uh, the CAN configuration 
Uh, this CAN interface has firmware and driver, Windows drivers, which we downloaded the latest from the internet. Um, I can also monitor the port for loading of the network. You can get up to like 85% of a CAN open network without running into any, pro any problems. I've got three nodes here. If I'm running some software doing point-to-point -point moves, I may only use two or three percent of the network capacity. I could have uh, I could have another 50 nodes out there before I could run into any problem. I also see that I don't get any frame errors. Uh, that's a good thing. If you start mucking with uh, you know cables and connections, you can you can see the uh, the frame errors increase. So uh, frame errors are bad. If you see one, you know, one bad message, it's replaced with a good message, so the counter goes up and down. If you hit 127, you hit a limit, uh, and you get a warning on that. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking, normally you would never get a, a frame error. So frame errors are, are not allowed um, unless you have a bolt of lightning or something. Um, that that's a good excuse to get a frame error. So I always watch a frame error counter and make sure it's it's always set to zero. Uh, the other interesting analyzer here is like a time domain analysis, which looks at the bit timing to get to the last node. Uh, so if I have a thousand nanoseconds and I'm only using up 200 nanoseconds, you know, send a pulse down, wait for it to come back, I can do five times as long of a can open network than I have here before I'll start running into a problem. Okay, well that's uh, enough for today for setting the node IDs with the multi-axis drive. Again, it's the AP2 multi-axis drive. Axis A is node 1. Automatically, axis B becomes node 2. Now this is different if you're doing EtherCAT. EtherCAT plays by a different set of rules. Uh, the first node is minus one, even if it is a multi-axis drive. So we have uh, slots or flat files, and we have an offset of 800 hex for you know the second node, and then 1600 hex for the the node after that. But for a can open network, first node give it a logical node address, and the and the rest are incrementally increased. Thank you.